Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. The mercies of God are new every morning. When you walk with God, every day is the chance for a fresh start. I want to talk to you about new seasons in the Spirit and how the Holy Spirit brings out new beginnings. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. Here's Stephen Moctezuma. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything. So if you're in a season of life where you are praying for a shift in your season, this message is for you. I want to show you something interesting in the scripture, particularly as it pertains to the Holy Spirit. One of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is the dove. The scripture says this in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove 
and settling on him. That's Matthew 3.16. The same narrative is repeated in Mark 1.10 and John 1.32. And Luke chapter 3 verse 22 says something slightly different. And the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended on him like a dove and a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. Now, other scriptures also speak about the dove. So we know that the dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And by looking at how the scripture describes doves, we actually see greater insight into that symbolism. So some scriptures speak to the purity and innocence of doves, such as Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 2, I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 says, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. So doves can symbolize innocence. Doves can symbolize purity. Other scriptures speak to the hiding nature of doves. Song of Solomon 2.14, My dove is hiding behind the rocks. Jeremiah 48, 28, you people of Moab, flee from your towns and live in the caves, hide like doves that nest in the clefts of the rock. So when you look at the dove in scripture and you look at the biblical symbolism for doves, you actually get insight into the person of the Holy Spirit because the scripture makes it clear that the dove is symbolic for the Holy Spirit. Now I want to show you something interesting here. In Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. You've likely heard these verses before, but I want you to listen to this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Now, here we see in Psalm 33, 6, that by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The Holy Spirit is that breath. The Holy Spirit is that wind. The Holy Spirit is that dove that was present at the beginning of creation. Now, when the scripture says that the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, what the scripture is telling us is that the Holy Spirit was brooding or fluttering. That's what that word means, hovering. It means brooding or fluttering like a bird would brood over its eggs to incubate them. So the Holy Spirit brooded over the spoken word of God to bring forth creation. The Holy Spirit was the breath at the beginning and we see the Holy Spirit of God and the word of God coming together to create, to, to cause, to bring into existence. Like a dove, the Holy Spirit brooded, fluttered, hovered, over the surface of the waters. The Holy Spirit moves upon God's voice and he adds that power to it. The Holy Spirit is the power of God in action. He is the omnipotence of God. So we know the story. The Holy Spirit is there. He's present at the beginning of time. God creates all things. And then, of course, creation falls. Man falls into sin. Man becomes a fallen creation. And so, in order to begin again, God sends a global flood. A flood that overtook the entire earth. He sent that flood that he might begin creation anew. He sent that flood that he might begin a new season. He sent that flood that he might cleanse the earth of wickedness. Now again... We know that the Holy Spirit is symbolized by a dove in Scripture. And we know that the Holy Spirit fluttered at the beginning of time. He was present at the very moment that God began to create. The Holy Spirit was present at the beginning of time. And when God began to first create, we see the Holy Spirit hovering. Now this is amazing because if you look in Genesis chapter 8 and you read verses 6 through 12, this is what the Scripture says. After another 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the boat and released a raven. 
the bird flew back and forth until the floodwaters on the earth had dried up. He also released a dove to see if the water had receded and it could find dry ground. But the dove could find no place to land because the water still covered the ground. So it returned to the boat and Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back inside. After waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. This time the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Then Noah knew that the floodwaters were almost gone. He waited another seven days and then released the dove again. This time it did not come back. Now, God created all things at the beginning. The Holy Spirit was present, hovering over the commands of God. Creation falls, God has to begin again or chooses to begin again. He sends a worldwide flood. That flood wipes out creation as it was. And God preserves a man by the name of Noah. Noah and his family were preserved in the ark. When the flood waters began to die down, when the punishment and the judgment was coming to an end, God gave Noah the task of beginning creation anew. And just like we saw the Holy Spirit at the beginning of creation in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, so again we see that dove present where God begins creation again. Noah releases the dove the first time. It comes back, no indication of dry land, nowhere for that dove to land, nowhere for that dove to mark as the place of new creation. Noah releases that dove a second time. It comes back with a branch. Noah releases that dove a third time, and it goes and it found a place where it would land. The dove went in search of where God would create again. Now, here's what's interesting. You don't see that dove land. The scripture never records that landing. You don't see the symbolism of a dove landing for the rest of the Old Testament. It's not until Matthew chapter 3 that we see the dove finally landing. The dove finally finding a place where God can begin again. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. The dove came in hailing the dawn of a new creation, announcing where God would begin creation anew. He did not land in the Old Testament but he came to land upon not a branch, but the vine. He came to find that place where God would begin anew, this time not a physical creation, but a spiritual one. This time, the work of salvation. This time, the work that came through Christ himself. The Holy Spirit will always be found where God is creating anew. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the active force of creation. This means that wherever the Holy Spirit broods, wherever the Holy Spirit flutters, wherever the Holy Spirit hovers, there is newness of life. Every promise that God has spoken over your life will come to pass. Every word that God has breathed will have the Spirit of God hovering over that word. The Holy Spirit broods over every promise of God. The Holy Spirit broods over every prayer you utter. The Holy Spirit broods over every declaration that God has made concerning you. But the Holy Spirit will only land on the Word. The Holy Spirit will only land where the Word is in action. So the Holy Spirit is the one who brings new beginnings. Now let me ask you, are you giving Him a place to land? Are you giving him a place to brood? Are you giving him a place to hover? Are you giving him a place to empower that promise? You see, 
He lands on the Christ in you. The Holy Spirit wants to do something new. The Holy Spirit wants to do something fresh. The Holy Spirit wants to breathe on the promises of God and cause them to come into existence. The Holy Spirit wants to take you into that season that God has destined you for. The Holy Spirit wants to take you to greater depths in prayer. The Holy Spirit wants to take you to greater depths of the Word. The Holy Spirit wants to take you to greater levels of holiness, to bolder evangelism. The Holy Spirit wants to bring you into the new season, not just for you, but for those around you, that you might be pleasing to God. Are you giving Him somewhere to land? The Holy Spirit is searching. Where can I begin creation anew? I don't know about you, but I want to be one upon whom the Holy Spirit can land. I want to be that place where the Holy Spirit can settle. I want to be that place where that Holy Spirit power can begin to work in my life. I want to surrender all. I want to give Him everything I am that He might mark me as a place where He can create again. And just as the Holy Spirit hovered in Genesis chapter 1 at the dawn of time, and just as the Holy Spirit hovered above the Lord Himself, so the Holy Spirit hovers over you, announcing a new beginning. If only you'd give Him a place to land. If only you'd surrender yourself. He would create anew. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you help us to become a place where you can settle. I pray, Holy Spirit, that even now, upon that one receiving this prayer, that you would begin to breathe life. Brood over every promise. Brood over every word. Cause that word to come alive in us Take us into the new season, Holy Spirit. We will follow, we will obey. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, amen. Well, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like to join the Spirit family, our online church, just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch, fill out the form, and then you will be an online member of Spirit Church. Now to your comments. These comments come from last week's teaching, Uncompromised, Walking in Total Obedience Toward God. Now, if you haven't watched that message yet, I encourage you to do so. It will really stir you and challenge you to do away with all compromise, and to totally devote yourself toward obedience to God's Word. Now, when you're going and checking that teaching out, make sure that you're subscribing if you're watching on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Follow us or subscribe. When you subscribe on YouTube, be sure to click that notification bell so that you can be notified when we release new content. And if you'd like me to potentially read your comment on an edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now. So again, these are the comments from Uncompromised, Walking in Total Obedience Toward God. Robin Ganade writes, It actually feels like God's power moves through the screen when I watch your videos. Thank you for the message. Glory to God. Robin, that's definitely the power of the Holy Spirit. This is His channel. We've surrendered it to Him. He does whatever He wants to do through these broadcasts. Jay Jericha writes, This was a cut above the rest of the Spirit-filled messages from Brother David. Surely, Encounter TV is a platform planned by God. Obedience, obedience, and obedience is the key to please God. I have learned that obedience is the main tool that can give us victory. Your emphasis on do what is right and leave the rest in God's hands touched me. I am learning day in and day out. May God continue to use you. Seraphim Leobon writes, God inhabits the praises of his people. Thank you, Brother Stephen, for such anointed worship. May the Lord continue to empower you. Thank you, Brother David, for the message. It challenges and stirs my faith. May the Lord help every believer to stand firm in our faith at any cost. God's rich blessings. 
And Emily Laramore writes, Thank you, Brother Diga. This word is so simple, yet so important to stay in the perfect wheel of our Heavenly Father. I found that if you simply trust and obey, you may not necessarily get the same outcome you hoped for, but the outcomes always bring glory to Him and often touch others in the process. I always look forward to these weekly teachings. They give me so much hope each day. God bless you, your family, and the DHM team. Well, thank you for writing, Emily. These teachings go around the world and we receive testimonies from people being saved, being healed, being delivered, being encouraged, being touched by God's power, and even being challenged to enter into the ministry. So God's word is working. And I want to invite you to be a part of what we're doing here at Encounter TV. Don't turn the video off. I want just a couple minutes to talk to you here. I really do want you to be a part of this. I want you to join in on what God is doing through these broadcasts. God is using the media that comes out of this ministry, the videos, the teachings, the live streams that we do, the Holy Spirit School, which is training people with a free Bible training school online, and the Holy Spirit is using the events that we do all around the world. Now, here's how you can be a part of it. I'm inviting you to become a monthly ministry supporter. You can do that by committing to $10 or more a month. If you commit to $10 or more a month, we're gonna give you access to our monthly partner Zoom calls where Steve and I jump on, update the partners and interact with you. You're gonna get event seat reservations for all of our ministry events. Any of them that you wanna to come to will save seats for you and your family members. You get 10% off all ministry apparel. You're going to get a special email update that's exclusive for our partners. You're going to get the World Changers update and you'll get a beautiful Dove lapel pin that you can wear to show your support of this ministry. Think about this. People spend money on gym passes, on streaming services, on all sorts of different delivery services. But I want to challenge you to give to this ministry on a monthly basis. I know some of us are struggling, some of us are worried about the future, but think about this. It's not just the one individual, it's all of us together coming in unity to support the gospel. So become a partner for $10 or more a month, or you can sign up for $30 or more a month where you get all of those benefits I mentioned, plus you get to select a book that I will sign and send to you. And if you sign up at the $100 level, I will send you all four books and will double your discount at 20%. But again, we do this because we love the Lord, because we love souls, because we want to see this content continue to go out around the world. When you become a partner, you're supporting the events, you're supporting the media, you're supporting the Holy Spirit School, you're supporting the live streams, and you're helping us to reach people all around the world. On top of that, you get all of those wonderful partner benefits. I don't think there's anything better than that. So sign up today to become a monthly supporter by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner, or you can give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Do that today, give a one-time gift or become a monthly supporter. But whatever you do, do it now. Join in the cause, join our army of supporters and help us continue to spread the gospel all around the world. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.